Welcome back inside the studio at the Valenti School of Communication. As this is the Houston National Signing Day webcast presented by Pena's Donut Haven and Grill. We're joined now by soccer head coach Chris Fowl. And, you know, soccer and football, they're similar in a lot of ways, but they're very different in a lot of ways. Now, you know, most of the players, they'll, they'll, they'll send their national letters of intent when they're out of school and can kind of enjoy it a little bit more instead of doing it in the morning. So uh, we'll talk more in general terms, but I, I want to kind of go through the process with you and building a recruiting class. First off, what are you looking for in a player to come to, to U of H? Uh, the big thing for me is just uh, there's a presence about them. They have something that they bring to the table every time we see them. Mm -hmm. um, our issue is we recruit really young, so we're recruiting freshmen and sophomores. So we just want to see something consistent. So if they're fast, we want to see that every time we play. If they're good in the air, we want to see that every t time they play. So it's something that they bring to the table and they do it every single time. That's what we look for. So when we get them, we at least know we have something to hang our hat on with them. You know, soccer is one of those sports where you have to recruit them way out whenever they're very young. What, what are the challenges of that whenever you have to start so early? A lot of challenges. Uh, at that time, they're all excited as they get a little bit older, start to drive. Interest may change. Uh, a lot of different dynamics. Uh, they grow um, in different ways and, and mature in different ways. So it's a, it's a huge gamble. Academically, they might change from their freshman year all the way up to the you know, their senior year. We're a tier one school, so it's very hard to get in. So kids that we identify as freshmen and really like us, it's hard to tell what the GPA and test scores are going to be and for a couple years. So th there's a lot of tricky things with these kids uh, recruiting so young right now. You know, it seems like coaches, they want to map out in terms of position. Okay, we want two of this player. We want maybe a goalie here, a midfielder here. And whenever you start so early, how, how do you kind of put that map together of where you want each class to be in terms of you know, positional breakdown? Well, I think the big thing for us is can they play soccer? Uh, I really don't worry about formations. I, I'm a big believer that you probably go find the ball and formations a little bit overrated. Um, I was a center mid all my life, went to college and ended up as center back, which I've never played defense in my life. <laughs> and it worked well for me. So, and a lot of kids change positions. And we don't know four years from now, two years from now, what we're gonna play. So again, it's just really identifying players that we need to fill the gap. So we need somebody strong in the air because our conference is a big conference. You know, we gotta go find that. Whatever position they'll play, we'll kind of rotate in. I, I'm kind of a big believer. I, they have certain qualities, I can coach the rest. I can put them in different positions and, and teach them that, that part of it. So it's really just identifying good soccer players and players that can help our program and continue to grow. Yeah, that's an interesting point. Good soccer players, a good soccer yes. player, and you as a coach, I guess, will work around who yeah. the best uh, <laughs> are on the field. Now, this, this year's class expected to be a big class, uh, 11 players coming in. and. Uh, whenever you bring in such a big class, uh, how do you get them incorporated with the, the rest of the, the rest of the squad? Well, that's the hardest part. Uh, I think soccer is just a difficult sport because we come in in August, we have two weeks, we start a season, and we're probably the shortest sport of all colleges. I mean, we get going, we're ended, and then we play Friday, Sunday, every weekend. So if you look at our schedule, we really only train Tuesday and Wednesday because then Thursday's ready for Friday and Saturday's ready for Sunday. So we have a day and a half. So, you know, I always tell freshmen, it's sink or swim with them. It's some kids can make it, some kids can't. By the spring, those players that have the ability will start to come to the surface that they didn't. So it really right now in the spring, we identify the players that are with us and who we think are going to start. So that way we're ahead when the freshmen come in. We have that two weeks to really focus on the freshmen and kind of fill in those gaps of what we need. But it's you got two weeks really to identify. And then once we get going, it's really hard to make changes with the way our season set up. One player I wanted to, to ask you about, you got a transfer a goalkeeper from Arizona, uh, Rachel Estepar. Estepar, what, what does she bring to the table for your squad? Certainly you'll have the chance to, to see her at work next week when you get going. Well, the biggest thing for us is, is experience. Uh, she's a kid out of uh, uh, Oregon area, uh, was committed to USC. Uh, the coach, I think, got let go, and then she ended up at Arizona. Um, and we got really lucky. She played uh, half the season there, split time, wasn't happy with that, and uh, you know, through the grapevine we found out about her. We needed a keeper with experience. We, we got a sophomore keeper and then two freshmen coming in, and we wanted to kind of bridge that gap, and uh, she's been training with us. She's gonna absolutely be tremendous. Athletic, big kid, big strong, can read the game well, and uh, you know, I think that's one of the last pieces of puzzle for us as we continue to build this program. Now the 11 that uh, will be joining the big old class, well, every coach says that they have a great recruiting <laughs> class coming in. Well, what are your expectations for the class that you have? I always look at no matter what size of class is, we want two to three kids to make an impact as freshmen. If we do that in over the four years, you got about 12 kids and then we start 11. So, and then the rest are usually surprises for us. So, uh, we think at 11, there's probably three or four that I think can come in and make an impact. That doesn't mean start, but I think 
can make an impact with our program. I think the rest could be surprises, but I think down the road, our big thing with them is we need to start developing players that are going to be juniors and seniors that are really going to do that part of it for us. We have the nucleus of the team. We have a sophomore class that's our first class, and they're the foundation, and that's what we're building off. So we really haven't lost much. We only have three seniors this year uh, going into the fall. So really, it's about development. It's about growing these players. So as these kids get a little bit older, uh, we have that impact and, and the maturity that we can compete in our conference. Well, Coach, we appreciate you taking uh, the time today. I know that uh, you're going to be talking to a lot of the, the players that you expect to see uh, signing a little bit later, so we appreciate you making the time. And we look forward uh, to seeing the names on that class and look forward to seeing them get, uh, get to work. Thank you. I appreciate it very much.